It's a lot of siren. And he has written what Neg Okay, sorry, I'm messy today. I'm like Bridget Jones messy today. Doing my research. Vague party of one. Very anticipated, very anticipated this one. Do we know that at the beginning? Sorry guys. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to a little bit more of my awards season series. It's not really a series. But if you have seen my previous videos, I did like my favorite female character in a book, which is like best actress. I did my favorite male character, which is best actor. And today I'm doing my best adapted screenplays, which is basically my favorite book to movie adaptations. I feel like that's all very obvious. So there you go. If you haven't had a chance to check out those other videos, I will link them down below for you guys. And if you like these types of videos, give it a thumbs up. If you are here but haven't subscribed yet, would love for you to subscribe and be a part of the universe that we have going on over here. But without any further ado, let's just hop into the best book to movie adaptations and TV show, like series adaptations. You know what I mean. <laughs> So these are in no particular order as far as what I've loved, but one of the most recent adaptations that I've seen that I absolutely loved is Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. So I'm going to shimmy this way so I can put the TV ad here. But this was done, I wanna say it was done for BBC and then it premiered on PBS in the US a few months ago, and now I'm sure you can purchase it all up from the streaming services. So anyway, Magpie Murders was a book that Anthony Horowitz wrote maybe 2016-ish. I'll include details down below. And I loved this book. So this is one of those books that I knew nothing about. It wasn't on my radar. I didn't even know who he was, which I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit, but I was at a writing conference with Writer's Digest. Like Writer's Digest put on the writing conference. I wasn't Part of the conference but anyway jeez there's always that question whenever there's a panel about like what books would you recommend or what are you reading right now and this was a panel which i distinctly remember it was the first time i had ever seen hank philippi ryan on a panel and i about screamed because i knew who she was and Hallie Efron was on the panel and one of them mentioned Magpie Murders. And they were basically like, it had just come out. If you haven't read it yet, like you have to get it, you have to read it. Don't even learn anything about it. It's just so brilliant. So of course I was like, done. And this is a book within a book. And this has a modern day storyline and then sort of a golden age of detective storyline. So what we wind up getting in this book, I'm just gonna give you a little. Okay, so I grabbed the book off the shelf because the adaptation is a little bit different in how it's told. So I didn't wanna give anything away in case you guys wanna read the book first or haven't read the book yet. So in this book, we are following an editor named Susan Ryland and her biggest client is Alan Conway. And he is a writer of golden age of detective novels. And he writes about this detective Atticus Pound. And he has written his ninth novel, Magpie Murders, and he has turned it in for Susan to review. So Susan is not expecting anything out of the ordinary. It's like a well-known detective series. It's a super popular, makes a lot of money kind of detective series. So she hunkers down to read the book. And we get sort of a first chapter introducing us to Susan, and then we get the physical book, and then we get some more stuff. So. It's a full book within a book, which I absolutely love. It is the first time I want to say I had ever read that before, and I just love it. So this was my introduction to Anthony Horowitz. So he is part of, or was part of the adaptation of the book into a series. So I want to say it was a six part series. His wife in real life is a producer. I say in real life because if you read his Hawthorne Horowitz series, she's in those as well. And it's just, he's just absolutely amazing. That's a sidebar, but anyway. It's such a wonderful adaptation. So he does switch it in the TV show where we are getting book within the book and present timeline interwoven rather than the entire book and then Susan's story. So I think the adaptation was really well done. It is true to the novel and it is just so well acted, so well shot, so well executed. I was obsessed with it and I highly recommend it. And if for some crazy reason you don't wanna read the book first, <laughs> definitely go check out the adaptation. I should take the book down so I don't block what I've got cooking over here. But it was just absolutely amazing. They are doing a second series and there is a second book in this series called Moonflower Murders, which I haven't read yet, but I'm going to. And I'm really just excited for it. So I just thought it was, it's like how adaptations should be 
and I just loved everything about it. Just absolutely brilliant. The next one I want to talk about is a movie, and this should shock nobody. It is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. So if you guys have been here for a minute, you know it is one of my all-time favorite books. I absolutely love Gillian Flynn. I can't wait for her to write something else. I've seen a few things in the news about her working on a novel and sort of talking about the post-Gone Girl pressure, but much like Magpie Murders, Gillian Flynn was directly involved with the adaptation of Gone Girl, which I think is a huge part of what makes it so successful. David Fincher was the director. It's Ben Affleck, Rosamund Pike. It's really, really well done. There's so much in this book, and I feel like there's so much of the book that is internal, but I think they do a really great job of bringing it to the screen. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So back in 2022, I was going to do a reread and then watch the movie. And I was like working on this whole vlog because it was the 10 year anniversary of Gone Girl. And I did reread the book, which I loved. And then I did watch the movie later, but I kind of fell apart on the vlog part of things. I'm sorry, sometimes life just gets in the way, but it's just so well done. And again, the acting is amazing. The cinematography, like the, the filming, the location, just the entire vibe of the movie is amazing. It has one of the best scores to it, I think. So Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross did the score to this. They also did The Social Network on top of like a whole bunch of other movies. But this is one of the scores that I write to when I am writing, <laughs> but it's so good. And it's just absolutely amazing. So hugely highly recommend that. And if you are a Gillian Flynn fan and you've already seen Gone Girl, then you definitely need to check out Sharp Objects. So this was a mini series that was done on HBO a few years back. Sharp Objects is, I feel like it's very neck and neck for me with Gone Girl. I absolutely love that book. And it was her first novel. I read it second. I read Gone Girl first. And the adaptation of this is also so brilliantly done. Gillian Flynn also had a hand in this, which again, I think lends to why it's so amazing. Amy Adams is the lead in that. And it is about a woman named Camille Preaker who winds up having to return to her hometown, which she has left for all her own reasons. So reluctant return home, which you guys know I love. But there are a series of girls that are going missing, young teenage girls. And Camille's mother and stepfather still live there. She has a stepsister who lives there. She is a journalist and she winds up going home because she's got that hometown connection. And she winds up being drawn into the case as she's investigating it and also sort of drawn into a lot of her family stuff, which is one of the reasons why she left. It's very dark. It's not easy to read in some parts, but it's just so well done. And I think Amy Adams just does a fantastic job. So again, multi-part series, the, the acting, <laughs> there's a reason why all of these are on here. The acting, the atmosphere of it, this has a great soundtrack to it as well. And I just think it really does a solid job representing the book and just giving that same feel of the book and bringing it to the screen. So I absolutely gobbled this one up when it first came out. And it's one of those ones that I definitely plan to watch again. And I just love it. I love it. I love the darkness. You guys know it's just so well done. The next adaptation is Defending Jacob by William Landay. So this was done on Apple TV a few years ago. Multi-part series. So well done. It's Michelle Dockery and Chris Evans are the parents. And this is a story where Chris Evans character is an ADA. This is set in Newton, Massachusetts. So very close to Boston. You guys know I love it. And his son is, I want to say he's 11 years old. And one of his son's classmates is murdered, found in the woods on the way to school one morning. And his son becomes the prime suspect. So it becomes this very disturbing story about do you know your children having to defend your child he cannot be part of the investigating team obviously because his son is the suspect but he is still investigating on his own trying to find out what happened to that classmate and it's a real unraveling of the onion and then you see how this accusation ripples through the community how it impacts their marriage how it impacts their lives Again, so well executed, so well acted. I was completely hooked. I really enjoyed this book. It's definitely a slow burn of a book. It is a legal thriller, as you can imagine. And I just was so gripped by this book, despite like the slow burn factor of it. But I thought it was such a well done story. There's so much power to him as a character and as a father. And that's why he was one of my favorite male characters. Spoiler alert, in case you haven't seen that video yet. But I really just loved it as the book. And I just think Chris Evans, who is so multifaceted, just did such an excellent job in this. And again, 
very atmospheric. All of these are shot in a way where it's just, it feels a little bit dark, it feels a little bit gritty. And I think, you know, I just always love those little, little peaks in Cambridge and Newton and Boston. I love that atmosphere, you guys know. And I just really was impressed with how well done it was and it was totally hooked, it was absolutely hooked. And again, I think they really honored the book, which is to me the whole point. I'm gonna have like one wild card on here towards the end teaser alert, which if you just want to go into it for some frothy fun. But again, I think this really honored the book and did a great job of that and really conveyed sort of the pain that this family is going through. And you just, when you have to question everything you thought you knew and everything you thought you knew turns on a dime, just what a terribly hard place to be in and then how you proceed from there. So loved it. Something a little bit lighter, I loved the adaptation of The Devil Wears Prada. So I know it wasn't wholly true to the book. This is the book by Lauren Weisberger. If you don't know The Devil Wears Prada, it's basically very loosely, not loosely written about Anna Wintour, who is the editor-in-chief of Vogue magazine. So in this one, it's Miranda Priestly, and it is from the POV of her second assistant, who is this girl named Andy, who is a journalism major who wants to do like all like the tough journalism things like she wants to work for the Times. she's going to be a serious reporter um, anyone come out of college and not be able to get a job in journalism and she winds up getting a job at this fashion magazine and it is about her sort of kicking against it because she doesn't want to be there she almost thinks she's too good to be there and then how she sort of slides into and starts playing the part and starts to really enjoy that fashion world and it's just a really well done book and it's fun and it's dishy and it's soapy and definitely the knowing it's Anna Wintour definitely kind of plays into the fun of it and the gossip of it all and it's a very insider story. Lauren Weisberger was her assistant at one stage so very behind the curtain but the movie itself just Meryl Streep is just Meryl Streep. She has so many great one-liners the looks, the fashion, if you're a fashion girl or fashion guy, like the fashion is so great. New York City vibes, really fun soundtrack. And again, it deviates a little bit from the book, but I still think it has great fun frothiness to it. P.S. This is not the one I was talking about a minute ago, but I really enjoyed this one so much. And this is a book that I haven't read in forever, and I definitely want to go back and read it again. I have read a handful of her books after Devil Wears Prada, and this was another one of those books. So back in the day, when I lived in Boston and I was part of a writer's group, somebody in my writer's group recommended this to me and I was like, what's that? And I think it had just come out because when I left the writer's group and I used to live <laughs> so many times where I lived just down the street from a bookstore, just around the corner, I lived down the street from a Barnes and Noble and I went in on my way home and bought it and like proceeded to just consume the book and I just absolutely loved it. So definitely a fun one. A turn back to the darkness. I have The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. So I am not wholly caught up. Uh, I don't have Hulu anymore. This show is on Hulu and I feel like you can get it on Apple TV. So season one of the book is very true to season one of the show. And again, so well executed, so well shot. I love this book. I read this book in college. It was my first Margaret Atwood book. When I think about pivotal books in my life, Handmaid's Tale definitely is up there as a book that really changed everything for me. It was such a great exposure to amazing writing, to new authors, to the perspective of it. I knew nothing about this book when I went into it and I read it in college and was just blown away by it. And again, a Boston Cambridge setting, which I just love that connection to it. But Elizabeth Moss, just such a phenomenal job as Offred, as The Handmaid. And this is difficult content, it's difficult to read, it's difficult to watch, and it is frighteningly realistic in ways. So Margaret Atwood, like people always say, and I've watched so many interviews with her, I'm just such a fan of hers, and people say like, this is unbelievable and this would never happen. And she pulled together all these different things that actually happened in history and put them all into one book. So maybe they all haven't happened at the same time, but everything in that book is things that have actually happened in history. And that to me makes it more terrifying. And I think we can all argue about recent politics, which I'm not here to talk about politics, but like this obviously had a big swell in the media in recent years as well. So really just well done. I watched 
season two and then I didn't go beyond that not because I wasn't interested in it but because I'm very much as much as I'm a mood reader I'm a mood watcher and then I wound up getting rid of my Hulu not because <laughs> I didn't like it but because I just wasn't watching it there's just way too many shows to keep up with so I will eventually go back to it at some stage but I do think the acting and this is absolutely phenomenal again really difficult content but very powerful content and if you are interested in it I highly recommend it because I just think it does like a phenomenal job in honoring the book. It's a lot of siren. The next show is Big Little Lies, and this is based on Leanne Moriarty's book. This is the first of her books that I read. I read this when it came out. This was a thousand percent a strolling through the bookstore cover by for me, and I loved this book. So I think the HBO adaptation is really well done. Again, outstanding acting, really great music, really great score, so beautifully shot, so beautifully atmospheric. And there's so much in the book. And even with, I don't know if this is a six or eight part series, not everything makes its way into the story. The book's like yay big, kind of like Magpie Murders is like yay big. But I think they honor the very important parts of the story. I think they get a lot of the critical pieces. And while I do think there are nuances to the novel that the same nuances don't always translate to screen, I think they did a really good job with the reveals. There's definitely some elements that I think are tricky to put onto the screen and still keep a bit mysterious. Vague, party of one. And I think they did as great of a job as they could with it. And I do think, again, some heavy subject matter, some light humor to it. I just, give me some Reese Witherspoon like any day of the week. I think she's absolutely amazing. But there is definitely a lot of heaviness and weightiness to this. So this is a story that follows the moms of a group of kindergartners. So it's kind of like first day of school, the kids are all there. Most of the women have been a part of this community for a while. And then we have the new mom in town. She is a single mom. And some people in the town are sort of looking at her sideways. And then Reese Witherspoon is the mom who sort of brings her into the fold. And everybody's got secrets. There's mysteries to things. And this is one of those stories where we know on page one, somebody is dead. There is a police investigation happening. And then we go backwards in time for the story to unfold. But then we get snippets of police interview from other parents in the community who sort of comment on our core characters. And you have to figure out who's dead, why are they dead, who did it, all that kind of stuff. So I just think it's amazing. I have read a handful of the Anne Moriarty's books. This one is definitely one of my favorites. I also really enjoyed The Husband's Secret, I thought was great. But anyway, this is just such a well done ad uh, adaptation. I have not watched season two of it yet, which I know is not based on the book. So the season one ends where the book ends and then they continue the story for a lot of the characters. I've heard some good things about it. I'm definitely going to watch it. I just haven't gotten there yet, but definitely excited about it. And I think this one was just, again, amazing. That's why it's on the list. I'm not gonna make a list of the ones that I think are terrible. So I don't know why I keep saying it's amazing. Okay, up next, let's have a little bit more levity again. Bridget Jones's Diary, Helen Fielding. I a thousand percent was one of the girls that ran out, bought this book, gobbled it up, fell in love with Bridget like saw myself in her, felt seen in this book, totally related to the hijinks and all the things she was up against and the fun and the friend group and the man drama. And I just, I thought it was just so inventive and so fun at the time. And it was just great to see somebody who was messy and who was struggling. And I feel like we all <laughs> could relate to that in some way, or maybe I'm speaking too generally. I a thousand percent could relate to that. So I think this adaptation was such great fun. I am a huge Renee Zellweger fan. I very much enjoy her. Give me some Hugh Grant and Colin Firth any day of the week. But I think the humor was amazing. I just think it was such a fun movie. It definitely cracks me up. I haven't seen it in forever and I would venture to guess that I would still crack up. The Colin Firth, Hugh Grant, <laughs> like, banter and just sort of dislike for each other is so great and I also think about Colin Firth in like the is it like the rain the reindeer jumper or whatever that he has on it's just there's so many just subtle funny moments and genuine funny moments and I just love it so if you're looking to cat like palette cleanse 
this might be a good one, especially since I have so many like heavy burden shows on here. So definitely a good palette cleanser for sure. Okay. Another one where I have talked about before and where I would say skip the book and just watch the movie. So I feel like this is a best adapted screenplay because the movie is so much better. I'm sorry. And it's The Thin Man by Dashiell Hammett. So I just was not a fan of the book. I saw the movie a thousand years ago. My parents were always introducing me to old movies. It's William Powell and Myrna Loy and they are Nick and Nora Charles and Nick is kind of a retired detective. They are socialites in, ho in Hollywood, in New York City. It's the 30s, they have their dog Asta. And anyway, Nick winds up getting sort of consulted on this case. And Nora encourages him to work on it. She thinks it's very cool that her husband used to be a detective. They have the best chemistry. There's just great humor to it. It's definitely like a noir detective story. But for me, and I just read the book last year because I had a curiosity about it. I didn't get the same humor and charm from the book as I got from the movie. And there are changes in the movie, but I really think it's just, it's William Powell and Myrna Loy that just bring it. And the movie itself was such a success that he wound up writing or co-writing more movies. So I want to say in all, maybe there's like five or six in the Thin Man series, but even if you just watch the first one, and I don't even know if it's like an hour and 10 minutes, it's just great fun. You won't be sorry. And I think you will just fall in love with them. They're just absolutely amazing. The next one, this is just sort of a generalized vibe that I have. So if you're an Agatha Christie fan, I am a huge fan of the 80s Peter Ustinov movies that were done. So they did Dead Man's Folly, Death on the Nile, 13 at Dinner, Murder in Three Acts, Evil Under the Sun, and he's Poirot, and I just think he does such a great job. So these are definitely a little bit lighter. There's a little bit of comedy to him and like some physical comedy to him and just sort of how he delivers his lines. But I love him as Poirot. So he was my introduction to the adaptations. Later, I saw Murder on the Orient Express with Albert Finney and the whole crew of people. And then I, can you DNF a movie? I DNF'd the modern Agatha Christie's, the Death on the Nile and Murder on the Orient Express. I didn't, I don't even think I made it like 10 or 15 minutes into either one of those movies. I just couldn't get around it. I probably spent a little more time on Murder on the Orient Express. I don't know. I just, I enjoy the frivolity of the Peter Ustinov ones. So I very much enjoyed those books. My introduction to Agatha Christie came through, I guess my dad probably introduced it to me, but I wound up reading the more popular ones when I was younger and then these movies were made and I kind of stayed in that little circle of them, but I enjoy them. It's definitely like of a time. It's almost, it's a little bit hallmarky in some ways. Obviously you still have all the murders and all the things that are happening, but it's definitely just like a whole different vibe and it's like my kind of vibe. So I thoroughly enjoy those, kind of in that murder she wrote vein. I would say they're kind of like that, but if you're looking for just some fun, again, lightheartedness, I highly recommend those. Big fun, big fun. Okay, the next one I have, which is my not really true to the book, but definitely entertaining. Half true to the book. Let's say that, halfway true to the book. And this is You by Carolyn Kempness. So to date, I have only watched season, all of season one of the adaptation. I had started season two and quit on it, but I'm gonna pick it back up again because... Apple had the first three series sold as a box set for $9.99 and I a thousand percent bought it. But we're here for season one. So I had seen the preview for the TV show, not knowing it was a book. Then I realized it was a book. So I read you. Yes, I was late to the party. And then I watched it when it first came out on Lifetime. TV show was on Lifetime before it was on Netflix. And the core of the story with Joe and Beck, Joe, my inappropriate crush who I completely love, even though <laughs> I wouldn't stand a chance with him. <laughs> the story of his obsession with Beck and sort of he will do anything to be with her is very much still there in the TV show. Penn Bagley does such a phenomenal job at Joe, as Joe. And I think it's just, again, really well done. I very much enjoyed it. There are changes made in some ways that are very minor. And then there are changes that are made that are major, including the entire neighbor next door. And I feel like in season two, it's the same thing. There's this neighbor next door. And I don't know if they do it to humanize Joe, but that entire storyline doesn't exist in the book. And I prefer 
it not happening. I preferred the book better in that way. I don't think we needed that. I don't think we need to humanize Joe. I think we can take Joe just as he is. So changes are made and I know that season two has more changes to it and season three they stop following the books but I do think the entertainment value is totally there. I think the acting is really good. I think if you just want to get lost in great story it's really fun but season one I thought was well done and I'm like just down for the creepiness of it all please any day of the week. So deviates from the book but there for the entertainment value a thousand percent. And then I'm going to wrap this up with two shows that have not yet come out but are coming our way in a heartbeat. So the first one it's up here is Daisy Jones and the Six. This premieres on Amazon Prime on March 3rd. If I'm wrong, even if I'm right, I will have the dates down below. So this is Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is the story of Daisy and the Six. So they are a rock and roll band from the 70s. The, TV, the book is told in interview style. So they were the biggest thing and then after a concert one night, they broke up and never performed again and nobody knew why. So they are getting back together to each tell their story. So we get the POVs from everybody in the band, everybody in the bubble. And then we get sort of past and present timelines in it. So we're hearing from them in the present day and then we're going back to what was actually happening at the time. I don't know how the TV show is going to be done, if it's going to be told in that interwoven way. I've seen the trailer for it. I'm totally down for it. It definitely is giving me almost famous vibes, which I'm excited about. And I will be tuning in. I will absolutely be tuning in. So very anticipated, very anticipated this one, <laughs> very much anticipating this. And then I know Malibu Rising. I don't know if it's in production yet, but it definitely was optioned. And then there's also the movie for how many times do I do these and then say, do your research, do your research. Okay, sorry, I'm messy today. I'm like Bridget Jones messy today. So it's One True Loves and it's gonna be out April 7th. So this is the book where we have our main character and her husband is in a helicopter crash when he is working and he is presumed dead. She is obviously devastated. She winds up returning home and then she reconnects with someone she knew when she was younger and then comes to find out that her husband is actually alive. And meanwhile, she is now engaged to this new man. So talk about, what do you do? Talk about a Sophie's Choice moment. I loved this book. I thought it was so well done. So I'm very excited to see this one as well. That was just a bonus. I kind of forgot about it until I started talking about it. Okay, the last one is The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. And this is going to be on Apple TV Plus, And this is coming out on April 14th with Jennifer Garner. So this is the only book on the list that I haven't read yet. And I own it because of course I do because messy. I have read the book <laughs> London is the best place in America by Laura Dave and I loved it. I loved it so much. So this one I feel like it was pitched as a mystery and then some people said it wasn't really a mystery. Don't know because I haven't read it yet but the blurb on this is before Owen Michaels disappears he smuggles a note to his beloved wife of one year quote protect her. Despite her confusion and fear Hannah Hall knows exactly to whom the note refers. Owen's 16 year old daughter Bailey. Bailey who lost her mother tragically as a child Bailey, who wants absolutely nothing to do with her new stepmother. As Hannah's increasingly desperate calls to Owen go unanswered, as the FBI arrests Owen's boss, and as a U.S. Marshal and federal agents arrive at her Sausalito home unannounced, Hannah quickly realizes her husband isn't who he said he was, and that Bailey just may hold the key to figuring out Owen's true identity and why he really disappeared. Hannah and Bailey set out to discover the truth, but as they start putting together the pieces of Owen's past, they soon realize they're also building a new future, one neither of them could have anticipated. So family drama, a bit of mystery to it. I, like I said, I loved her book, London is the Best Place in America, which also has a family dynamic vibe to it. It is a woman who has broken off her engagement and now she is coming home to be a part of her brother's wedding and confronting all of those feelings. But I loved her writing. I just loved just everything about it. The characters <laughs> cried, of course I cried, but I definitely want to read this book and then watch the show. So I don't have Apple TV plus either, but incentives to get these things once <laughs> the, once um, all the episodes are out and stuff like that. But I'm definitely looking forward to that one as well. So just wanted to throw those two, three bonuses on there. 
So let me know what is your favorite adaptation book to movie. There's a kajillion of them. I know I barely scraped the surface here, but you know, part of the fun is just hearing about other people's favorites as well. And hopefully maybe introducing you to one that was new or convincing you to watch one that was new. I got, I have goals. I have goals, you guys. So we'll see what happens, but let me know your favorite down below. Let me know about upcoming ones that you've heard about. I have not done a whole lot of research on what's coming up, so shame on me. But if you know of some new releases that are coming, let me know about that too, because obviously I'm here for that as well. So until next time, thank you guys so much for being here, for supporting me, for being a part of the fun and the channel. And I hope everybody's doing great. And I will talk to you guys really soon in another video. Bye everybody.